The new game option shows on the LCD display the first time the menu button is selected. When this is a new game, press yes to clear all of the program data for the last game played or the game in progress and begin running the selected sport. Press no to resume the game in progress using the current data and exit the menu. If the All Sport Console is utilized for multiple sports, it may be necessary to enter a new code. After selecting Menu and pressing the down arrow button once, the option to enter a new code is presented. Press Yes to begin selection of a new code from the Enter Code prompt. Press No to resume the game in progress using the current data and exit the menu. Home Roster and Guest Roster are entered the same way. Home Roster is used as an example. Press Yes or the right or left arrow key to select the Home or Guest Roster submenu and show the first prompt on the LCD. After selecting Yes, Home-Team Name will appear on the LCD screen with the second line flashing on the first letter of the team name. You will see at the end of the line the asterisk is also blinking. This is to let you know to accept the change. Enter Yes needs to be pushed after the name is entered. The team name insert must be used to enter the team name message center settings. The team name message center setting is updated after each selection is completed. Enter up to 15 characters for the team name and press enter. After entering the home and guest team names, reinsert the basketball insert to continue. Press no to resume the game in progress using the current data and exit the menu. As you prepare to utilize the AllSport 5000 console for basketball, there are a few specific menu options to begin setting up. After you have turned on the console, the menu will prompt if this is a new game and if a new code needs to be entered. The menu key allows the user to select from a list of options specific for each sport. Utilize the up and down arrow keys to scroll through the menu list. Press in a key other than yes, no, the arrow keys and other allowed keys exits the menu function. Use this function at the start of each new game to edit the home and guest rosters. Pressing the menu key again is the easiest way to exit the menu function. Within the menu navigation, there is an option for edit settings. Edit settings will give you the option to edit settings related to the number of periods, main clock, play clock, timeouts, team score, and fouls, and a couple of other options that have defaults set within the system. To access the edit settings option, choose the menu key, then arrow down past new game, new code, dimming, home and guest roster, and display settings. When the LCD shows menu-main, edit settings, you will want to select enter or yes to access the options. The first setting in the edit settings menu is to set up the number of periods. As the operator, you will want to select two or four, then hit enter or yes on the keypad. The main clock mode and time options allow for setting the display to show a tenth of a second and the lengths associated to a period, break, and overtime. The shot clock time allows the options to set reset one and reset two times and select if it will be reset on stop. Whenever a new number, yes or no, have been selected, the asterisk will blink that enter or yes needs to be pressed to save the selection. The shot clock setting is used by the remote shot clock console. The configured shot clock times are set using the edit settings function when a new code is selected. The reset one button resets the shot clock using the reset one time and the reset two button uses a reset two time. Timeouts both full and partial can be set to the specific number that need to be available for the game with the amount of time that needs to be associated to each. As you enter in the correct number, the asterisk will flash to have you hit enter or yes to save the change. During the game, as timeouts are used, it will apply what is used based on this setting. With basketball, you also have the ability when entering in the home and guest roster to add in the player numbers. The next setting available in the edit settings portion of the menu after adjusting the timeout options is to determine if the team score and team fouls will update each time to request the number for each player. By selecting Y for yes for team score, update player and for the team fouls update player every time points or a team foul are entered the council will prompt you for the player number
On the basketball insert, you will find options to enter specific items for home and guest teams along with general in-game information. Let's review these buttons. Under home and guest, there is the ability to add points, fouls, timeouts, bonus, possession, and substitutions. The home and guest score plus one, score plus two, and score plus three keys are used to increase the team score and the score minus one key is used to decrease the team score. Pressing the appropriate score key to change the score for the home or guest team. The LCD shows which key was pressed and the new value for the team score of the corresponding team. If the program is configured to update the player points, this prompt displays asking for a player number. Enter the jersey number of the player who scored the points and press enter. If the player is not in the roster, this prompt asks if the player should be added. Press yes to add the player to the roster and credit the points to that player. Press no to decline the entry of the player number. The player's jersey number and number of points displayed if the player was found in the game are correctly added to the roster. Press the home or guest team fouls plus one key to raise the number of team fouls for the corresponding team. The number of team fouls stop increasing on the scoreboard at the number of fouls configured for the two shot bonus. If the program is configured to update the player fouls, this prompt display is asking for a player number. Enter the jersey number of the player who made the foul and press enter. If the player is not in the roster, this prompt asks for if the player should be added. Press yes to add the player to the roster and credit the foul to the player. Press no to decline the entry of the player number. This message displays when the answer to the previous prompt is yes and the roster is full. The player's jersey number and the number of fouls display if the player was found in the game are correctly added to the roster. Please note if a player number is not entered, the fouls will not be displayed. The bonus settings configured in the edit settings section of the menu are used to turn on the bonus indicators when those levels are reached for the team fouls. This will happen as team fouls are increased to those levels. For manual operation, to turn on the bonus, press the home or guest bonus key to turn on the one-on-one -on -one bonus indicator for that team. Press the home or guest bonus key a second time to turn on the two-shot bonus indicator for that team. Press the bonus key a third time to turn off both indicators. When the home or guest individual sub key is pressed, this prompt asks the jersey number of the player entering and leaving the game. Enter the jersey number of the player entering the game on the number pad and press enter. Enter the jersey number of the player leaving the game on the number pad and press enter. There are a couple of messages that could be displayed after selecting the individual substitution. The individual sub-home sub-OK message is displayed if no errors are found. The individual sub-home sub-not made is displayed if the player is already marked as in or the player coming out of the game is not marked as in. When a mass substitution takes place, there is a button to assist with quick entry of the player's numbers. Select the mass sub button. After the home or guest mass substitution key is pressed, the LCD will display a message asking for the first of the five player numbers that are going into the game. Enter the jersey number on the number pad and press enter for each of the five players. The mass sub dash home sub OK message is displayed if no errors are found. The home and guest timeout keys are used to reduce the number of timeouts remaining and to start the timeout clock. The scoreboard indicator is turned on when the type of timeout is selected, full or partial. The scoreboard indicator is turned off when the timeout clock expires or is it stopped. Only the types of timeouts that were configured in the edit settings function are displayed on the LCD and available for selection. The up and down arrow keys can also be used to select the full and partial timeouts. Press timeout to display the number of full timeouts remaining. To accept the full timeout, and to start the timeout clock, press yes. Full timeouts decrease. To decline the selection of the full timeout, press no. Full timeout does not decrease. To exit the timeout clock, press timeout again. This will turn the timeout off. Press timeout a second time to display the number of partial timeouts remaining. To accept the partial timeout and to start the timeout clock, press yes. Partial timeout decreases. To decline the selection of the partial timeout, press no. Partial timeout does not decrease. Timeouts-home 
or guests no timeouts is the message that will appear when there are no full or partial timeouts left. The standard in-game details for recalling the shot time, setting the shot time, timeout on and off, in-game, out-of-game, delete player, blank player foul, clear team fouls, and period plus one can be found in the middle of the insert between home and guest options. Press recall shot time to recall the shot time that was remaining before the last shot clock reset was pressed. To accept the recall, press yes. To decline the recall, press no. Timeout on and off stops and starts the timeout clock. The length of both the full and partial timeouts can also be changed when the timeout clock is stopped. Only the timeouts configured in the edit settings function are displayed on the LCD and available for selection. The up and down arrow keys can also be used to select the full and partial timeouts. Press timeout on off to display the configured time for full timeout length. To accept the full timeout length, press yes. To decline the selection of full timeout length, press no. Press timeout on off a second time to display the configured time for partial timeout length. To accept the partial timeout length, press yes. To decline the selection of partial timeout length, press no. Press set shot time to display the current shot clock time length. To accept the current shot clock time length, press yes. To decline the selection of the current shot clock time length, press no. Use the keypad to enter the new time in minutes and in seconds to pre and press enter. Press set shot time a second time to display the configured time for shot clock reset one length. To accept the shot clock reset one length, press yes. To decline the selection of the shot clock reset one length, press no. Use the keypad to enter the new time in minutes and in seconds and press enter. Press set shot time a third time to display the configured time for shot clock reset two length. To accept the shot clock reset two length, press yes. To decline the selection of the shot clock reset two length, press no. To change the shot clock reset to length and to set the shot clock enter the new time in minutes and in seconds on the number pad and press enter. The configured time of the shot clock is set using the edit settings function when a new code is selected. When the home or guest player key is pressed, this prompt asks the jersey number of the player to be edited. Enter the jersey number on the number pad and press enter. If the player is not in the roster, this prompt asks if the player should be added. Press yes to add the player to the roster. Press no to decline the entry of the player number. If the player is found, the player's game status and statistics can be changed. To change a player's statistics, use the up and down arrow key to select the player from the list. Use the left and right arrow keys to select the statistic to be changed. The third step is to enter the correct number for the selected statistic on the number pad and press enter. Press clear to exit the menu and return to the game. To delete an incorrect player from the roster, press player, then use the keypad to enter the player number and press delete player. Press yes to remove the player from the roster, press no or clear to decline the deletion process and return to the game. The blank player foul button will blank the digits on the player foul field on the scoreboard. Press period plus one to change the period number. The full and partial timeouts and team fouls are automatically reset at halftime. The edit key allows the user to select and edit the following scoreboard fields. Timeout, score, team fouls plus one, period plus one, and timeout on and off. For example, press edit and the key for the home or guest field to be edited. Now on our LCD, we will see team score dash edit, home, and the current score with an asterisk blinking. We want to enter the correct score, then select enter to accept the change. 